Salve Regina, Mate Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Et Spes Nostra Salve. Ante clamamus, Exules Filii Hebe, Ante Suspiramus, Gementes et Lentes, In Ac Lacrima, Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Now, today, we continue to pray for world peace, peace that is so desperately needed as, again, tensions are running so high. It's Friday of the first week of Lent, and, you know, this week, we have had a string in the gospel, of gospel readings, a string of intense messages, commands, precepts of the Lord. The kinds of things that are meant to challenge us. It's perfect for the season of Lent. But it's meant to help us in our ongoing call to conversion of heart. As disciples of Jesus, to more and more conform our hearts to the heart of Christ. That's not easy work. It's good work. Today is no exception. Today you want to listen to the driving energy that the Lord invokes in our call to reconcile with one another. Our reconciliation is crucial in the Christian life. It's crucial for our hearts, and the Lord knows it's crucial for countries right now. So may we pray for that reconciliation, starting with us to flow out into our world that so desperately needs it. I'll talk more about that in the homily today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, The Lord be with you. My dear friends, let us call to mind our sin, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have, Christ have, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, if the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all the statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked? Says the Lord God. Do I not rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this, he shall die. You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked man turns from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall persevere and preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. The responsorial song. If you, O oh Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O oh Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive and my voice in supplication. If you, O oh Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O oh Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? I trust in you, Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O oh Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You've heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill. Whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Racha, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent 
will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveness, reconciliation, boy, they're great concepts. They make so much sense. We hear about it, we nod our heads. This is a great teaching until we got to carry it out ourselves. It's one of those things where a lot of times, you know, you think about, boy, everybody should just get along. They should just say, I'm sorry, and will you forgive me? Can I forgive you? We should all do that until we've been hurt or we've hurt somebody else. If we've been hurt, then we're holding on to something. And if we've hurt somebody else, maybe we're dealing with our own guilt and shame. And we don't want to fess up that we made a mistake. We don't want to admit that we're the problem. Because that would make us look bad. It's funny how our ego can get in the way. And yet, this is the path forward that brings healing. When relationships are broken... And that can be in our own hearts, within our own families, our own communities, and Lord knows, the global village. When relationships are broken, there's going to come a point where we have to move forward with reconciliation. And Jesus makes it very clear here in his teaching that this is something that is non-negotiable. We have to do it. Because everything that we're holding on to, any of that sin, that pain, that temptation, any of those old hurts are not allowed in heaven. They can't be brought into eternal life. Reconciliation is the path forward where we let it go. And thus we let go of its power over us. We let go of the chains that bind us. We let go of the hurts and the wounds and the shame and the guilt and the fear and the anxiety. We let it go and we turn to the cross because Jesus is the one who makes it possible through his saving death and resur resurrection, his sacrifice sets us free. But reconciliation is the way that that grace is open to us. Reconciliation is the way that our hearts are unlocked and his love can flow in. But well, we got to bring this home to our own level. Who's the brother that we have to go to and reconcile with today? Who's the person that we need to look in the eye, if at all possible, and say, hey, can we make peace? This is messy and this is hard. And sometimes it's very complicated. Sometimes the, the people that we really need to reconcile with, we can't. Either they've died or they're not in a position to want to reconcile with us or maybe distance or maybe the circumstances just do not prevent it or provide for it maybe but are we choosing to reconcile are we seeking it part of the key behind the teaching of Jesus today is that rather than holding on to the past hurt and pain we are actively actively going out to our brother. We're not sitting back waiting, well, you know, if he says I'm sorry, maybe I'll think it. That's not what this says. Go and leave your gift. Don't even come to the altar. Leave it here. Get out there and do the reconciliation. This is on us. It's an active, it's an edifying, dynamic movement of our spirit, our will seeking to be the instrument of reconciliation, our will saying, I will not be the problem. I want to be the solution. Our will choosing to say, I want that higher path. I no longer want to be bound by whatever was broken before. So folks, today, we just have to take that time to reflect. It's very painful at some times. It's very awkward. It's very messy. Welcome to life. But that's true for us at our level, just in our own hearts. Let's play this out on the scene of the global world. You don't think that this teaching of Jesus is going to need to be invoked over and over again by millions? And that what's playing out in front of us on our screens is going to be telling us that we're going to be praying for this for a long time. We know a lot of people are going to need this kind of healing because a lot of people have lost everything. And we're going to be storming heaven 
that the reconciliation that Jesus calls for will take place in human hearts around the globe. Part of this is that Jesus would not give us this commandment if he wouldn't give us the grace to also carry it out. And so if we're confronting something that seems impossible, that's when we get down on our knees. That's when we come to the cross. That's when we come to the Lord and say, I need a little help here. Help me to carry out your command because Lord, I want to follow you. And this difficult, challenging task that I know leads to healing and newness of life. Lord, help me. Walk with me. Give me the strength and grace I need to extend my hand and say to my brother or sister, let's forgive on this. Let's move forward in love and peace, civility. The challenge of this teaching, we have to acknowledge. That's because the wounds in some of our hearts are grave. May we seek the healing that Jesus offers that's made possible through the gift of reconciliation. May we be actively looking for it in all of the places and spaces of our hearts. May we be ambassadors for it in our lives, seeking to unite and build the bridges that have at times been destroyed by sin, our own weakness, and our own fears. God help us. God bless us all. We pray for our world. We pray for we pray for peace and that peoples can be reconciled, countries can be reconciled. We pray for the de-escalation of these tensions. We pray that cooler heads will prevail, that wisdom will come upon world leaders. We pray that soldiers will find in their consciences a desire to turn away from the atrocities that are being committed. Pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for those who have suffered so horribly in these last couple of weeks. People who have been ripped apart from their families. People who have been grievously wounded. Those who have been innocently killed. Those who have died to try to protect their homes and their families. For all of those who are dealing with the suffering and the ramifications of hosting refugees, well over two million now. For all of those who are suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We want to pray for all of our world leaders. For those who hold decisions of policy in their hands. In a special way, I pray for Vladimir Putin. That he will have some change of heart. We pray for those who are in his inner circle. We pray for our leaders around the globe in their response, that they again will be guided with sound judgment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for those brothers and sisters mentioned in this gospel reading that we need to reconcile with. We pray for the people, we know them. We can see them in our mind's eye. We pray that we will ask the Lord for the grace to face one another and be instruments of reconciliation and healing today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everybody who's sick, facing medical procedures, surgeries, tests, for those who are in recovery, for those who serve in the medical provision, profession, and for caretakers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Bob Wachholz, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of you at home, and as I mentioned yesterday, you know, you don't know where a broadcast like this goes out. You don't know who sees it around the world, and you just pray that for any of you out there who are directly affected by the terrors going on in Ukraine, our hearts go out to you. But for all the prayers that you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, you know what we need. Help us to be agents of reconciliation, bringing your healing grace and love to those around us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. O God, 
we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human ends. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your Spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks, with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament renew us, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Some announcements. Our neighboring parish down the road in our cluster, St. Anthony's Church here in Superior, has its uh, fish fry dinners going on now every Friday in Lent. 
Uh, and again, they're, they're back to full speed, so you can dine in or have takeout, deep fried or baked. It's a beautiful meal, beautiful community, great time to be together. Uh, it's from 4 till about 6.30 uh, on Friday nights in Lent, and we'd love, love to have you there, so that's going on. Registration for Cathedral School continues. People are asking questions, and so I just keep directing them to the school office. We gotta pray for peace. We got to pray for people who are making decisions that they are wise decisions. We got to pray for a softening of hearts and a calming of the mind. We got to pray that people will come together, that they will reconcile. This is why the Lord came. Because in our own hearts, let alone our own world, it can be a big hot mess sometimes. That's why we pray. That's why we follow Jesus. That's why he had to die on a cross. And that's why we cling to him the strength and grace and help we need. Folks, pray. May we pray and pray that God's will be done to bring about reconciliation for all those affected. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.